Welcome to Broad Strokes, Fortune's weekly show where we talk about the news that matters to women. So, and the big story this week, of course, is Uber. Uh, Susan Fowler, who's a former engineer at the company, wrote an explosive blog post, went totally viral about her, you know, very, very, very strange year at the company, as she calls it. It starts out really crazy, and then it just gets worse. But it starts out her first week at the company, she was propositioned in writing by her manager. In writing, it was that casual. I know, it was in writing, and then HR, you know, seeing this post, does absolutely nothing about it. I mean, they basically said, you know, this is his first offense, he's a super high performer, so they kind of are like, you know what, sorry, we can't really do much about it, kind of your problem to fix. And then it just gets worse from there. There are a few other instances of gender discrimination, but, you know, these basically never, ever went anywhere, and she ended up leaving Uber and, you know, kind of writing this, this big expose piece. Right. And then the New York Times this week followed up with a really interesting story. They talked to 30 employees who echoed these sentiments about this, the culture of the company being sort of like an unrestrained male festival of aggression. There are three other sexual harassment suits pending against the company in at least two countries. Um, and I think notably, Uber only has 15% of its technical positions filled by women. Even Google is 19%. So that's bad for the industry. Yeah, it's bad for the industry. And I mean, the company knows it. The CEO knows it. Um, and he brought in Eric Holder and Ariane Huffington, who's actually a board member for Uber, to kind of come in and try to solve the problem and get to the bottom of it. But it almost seems like they call it, they call it an investigation as if they don't know what the problem is. I think everybody knows what the problem is. And Ariane Huffington called it, you know, that they keep hiring these brilliant jerks. Yeah, yeah. She said, no more brilliant jerks. But I think when you have brilliant jerks running the company, mm. uh, it's going to be a little hard to weed out. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you. Uh, another really big story this week that was in the Harvard Business Review was about women and uh, flexible time off, flexible scheduling. And it was a really frustrating piece for me to read because we kind of hold up flexible scheduling as this kind of cure-all silver bullet for all of women's problems, but it's actually hurting women more than it's helping them, it seems. Yes, yes. One of the really disturbing implications was that even if women get flexible schedules, uh, they're still paid less than the men with flexible schedules. Um, and and when they ask for it, they're perceived as less dependable and less likable than the men who ask for the exact same thing. Again, it's like when we're not, when we don't see men taking care of their kids as like an ordinary, normal thing, you know, women lose out. Yes, exactly. Also this week, rising star Milo Yiannopoulos had a dramatic fall from grace. The uh, former Breitbart tech editor has uh, stepped down over comments he made about pedophilia. Yeah, I mean, so it's really interesting to me that it basically this was the straw that broke the camel's back. I mean, he's made so many racist, sexist, anti-Semitic comments. Right, but you just can't cross the line over right. sex with 13-year-olds. It's right. just like, it's That's, too far. He called consent a arbitrary and oppressive concept, I believe. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely, I mean, he tries to be provocative. This is his whole shtick. Um, and finally, you know, he crossed the line. And, and Personally, I'm happy that he no longer has a soapbox to stand on. But obviously, this brings up this issue of free speech, and a lot of conservatives are a lot of conservatives are kind of viewing this as a kind of touchy thing. Yeah, yeah, and I think when you look at the free speech issue, I, I think Milo should be able to say whatever he wants. But I, I don't think that the book publishers or Breitbart should be obligated to give him a platform. I think that you know, if Milo wants to like take a soapbox into the town square and sort of yell things at people passing by, he should be able to do that. But I think maybe we're moving toward where Milo should be, um, the platform he should be given, which is not much of one at all. Totally agree with you. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have this week on Broad Strokes. Please join us next week on Fortune.com.